football is definitely a 24-hour job. You know, you obviously need to, you know, watch what you eat, keep your body in decent shape, and you know, it's very hard to switch off from it. Um, someone like myself that struggled with injuries along the way, you know, I'd go home and you know spend the afternoon in front of the TV doing stretches or, or Pilates and. Um, you know, making sure I didn't sit down the wrong way because my back would lock up, and it sort of um, it does. Uh, you know, takes a lot of um, sort of mental, you know, strength to concentrate on that sort of thing. Probably being a professional athlete's about that. You know, it's a short time frame, and, and you need to put, you know, all, all your time and efforts into it. But um, I think you do get caught in, uh, you know, that sort of. Um, bubble of not knowing what's going on around you, you're sort of just, you know, um, worried about the football and, and your job. It's one thing that I think, you know, current players really need to, um, you know, start looking at whether they're, whether they're ready or prepared to um, not having that sort of daily schedule that they need to abide by. You know, my career obviously peaked at a young age and, um, you know, I won, an, won the first ever A-League title at, you know, 19, 20 years of age and, you know, captain the Joeys at an Under-17 World Cup and captain the Young Socceroos at a 20s World Cup and was part of, uh, you know, the 2008 um, Oli Roo squad before, you know, sort of injury got the better of me and, um, you know, no secret that my my career was sort of heading in well in the right direction and um, you know I had ambitions and goals to you know play for the Socceroos and and make a good career out of it and um, you know obviously with those injuries my career got cut short and it's it's very um, you know I look back at it now and, and you know I'm, I'm a big believer of things happen for a reason but you know it's disappointing that it ended that way but that's the other side of um, professional sport that it can be ripped away from you very quick and, and that's you know, probably what happened with my career. I had everything from, you know, soft tissue injuries to ankle surgeries to bulging discs to, um, you know, biomechanical issues. And, um, you know, unfortunately, um, it caught up on me. And, um, you know, still to this day, I, you know, I struggle with a um, chronic um, ankle injury where I, I wake up in the morning and, you know, limp to the toilet until I get it warm for the day. You know, I'll never run again. So it's, um, you know, Football obviously was, you know, the reason behind that, but it's something that, you know, I'll have to deal with for the rest of my life. My career professionally ended, um, you know, in a disappointing way. I was up at the North Queensland Fury, I had signed a two-year contract, and, um, you know, unfortunately the, the Fury ownership um, didn't go in the right direction, and the FFA stepped in and took over, and, you know, that was a really hard time for me because I had another year to go on my contract, and. Um, you know, unfortunately, the FFA didn't, um, you know, uh, sort of roll over the contracts for the current players that were there. And because I was injured at the time, I was, I was cut short of that second year, which I do look back at now and think that that year could have been um, the difference between me continuing playing professionally and not. When you're not playing, no one really cares about you. It's sort of a, um, you know, and it probably still happens to this day. You know, I think players are used and abused a little bit. Um, you know, if you're playing and doing well, everyone wants to know you, you're getting pats on the back and if you're not playing or you're out injured, you know, you're sort of just put to the side and you know, no one cares until you're sort of back on the training park or, um, you know, you're playing a good game. I moved back home and it was uh, difficult because I was out of that professional environment and, you know, I had to deal with um, not having that sort of schedule to wake up to and uh, I still wanted to play and I was obviously trying to get myself fit at the time, which I did in the state league and you know like a lot of players now they leave the A league I was no different I was looking at options in Asia I was you know waiting for that phone to ring from an agent or a club to invite me for a trial or, or for a contract and you know you sort of get in a bit of a rut and you know I spent hours you know down the park just running by myself or you know going to the gym every day and you sort of um, you know mentally it was tough because you, you're holding on to a dream and you know nothing's sort of happening from it and it probably took a good 18 months of sort of just me persisting and trying to see something happen and I finally got to the point where I just thought, you know, it's probably not worth it anymore and, you know, I've probably got other things that I can try to do in my life rather than constantly, um, you know, pushing myself to get back to where I was. So, um, yeah, like I said it was 18 months, you know, you go through bouts of, you know, probably depression and you're down and, but, you know, with family and friends that I had around me with for their support, I think I'm a bit more mature now and, you know, I've had time to digest it all and, you know, uh, I got married, I met my beautiful wife and we're expecting a child this year so, you know, you sort of, 
you come out of the other end and you, you realise there's a lot more to life than um, obviously just football. I, mean, I probably didn't plan as well as I should have for life after football. Um, you know, when you're young, you, th you think you're invincible and you know, you're going to be playing for 15 years or 20 years. But um, you know, at the time, that was probably the furthest thing from my mind. I, like I said, I was only young and had success at a young age, so I thought you know uh, I didn't have to worry f about life after football until down the track. But with uh, my brother, we started up our soccer man business, and that really uh, gave me you know a bit of a new lease of life and a bit of direction and. You know, we've been doing that now for sort of four years, and it's it's uh, you know it's what we what we do day to day now, and it's expanding, and it's given me something to uh, put all my energy and focus into, and um, you know put that sort of football career behind me. So people need to realise that you know professional sports people are, are human beings as well, and you know they, everyone needs to be treated with the same amount of respect, whether you're the marquee player or you're the you know the young player in the team scrubbing the boots. It's you know I, I think that's a big part because it play it, it does affect um, a lot of players, young and old.